All right, let's talk about functions. Now, functions are what I like to think of as mini programs. It's like this organized block of code that you you define and then you can call it later and it makes it a lot simpler than typing everything out. So it's a lot easier to visualize this than me to just talk the theory of it. So let's go ahead and let's g-edit our, our script again, our script.py, and then we're going to ampersand this one this time. And we should have our Python script from before. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to add in a new section here. And that section is just going to be called functions. So if we want to print out, we can print out a new line to kind of put this together. And then maybe when it's all said and done, we can print a function or make a function that just prints and uh, make it a little bit easier for us. So we're going to print a new line here, define functions, and maybe we'll just print out something that says, here is an example function. So this is really just going to define the area. If we save it while you're typing yours, I'm just going to print mine. So we'll Python three script.py. And you see, we've got the new line here and we see here is an example function and we just start from here. So let's take a look at a function using something that we've already done before. So we've got this section here and we've got name, age, GPA. We're going to kind of reuse this and this print my name is. So let's go ahead and reuse this. We're going to say function here, right? So we're going to define kind of a who am I? So we're going to define this and then we're going to do two parentheses and then a colon here. So it's going to look like this. And what's important now is that we use indentation. Now we haven't had to talk about indentation to this point, but Python is very, very critical on utilizing indentation. If you don't use it in the right places, then your program will not function. So it's very important to know when to use indentation and to indent properly. So to indent, I'm just going to tab here and I'm going to redefine everything again. So we can just say name equals Heath and we can just say age equals 30. Type that wrong there. And then we can just copy this print right here. So we don't have to type it all out again. Just copy it and paste it. And you can see define who am I. And we're going to define in this function a name variable, an age variable, and then we're going to print this out. So if we were to just go ahead and save this, and print this, nothing, nothing's here. All we've done so far is just define this function. We have done nothing to actually call it or, or do anything. And let's make a note here that this is a function, right? So when we get down towards the bottom, let's go ahead and just try to call this function. So to call a function, all we got to say is, who am I? And let's go ahead and save this run it again. And look, it says my name is Heath and I am 30 years old. Well, what's happening here? Okay, so we're defining a set of things to do, right? This is a mini program. And inside this mini program, we've defined our variables, and we define an action here to take, which is printing out this string. So what it's doing is when we call this, it's saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and take all this and I'm going to run this program and give you the result. Now, what's important to note is whatever is stored in these variables here is only stored there inside the function. If we were to print age from the last video, it should still be 32, I do believe. So let's print and you'll see it's 32. Even though we declared age up here as 30, that only lives inside this function. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So again, everything is living inside this function and it's a mini little program that we have here and we just call it at a later time. So let's go ahead and build out another function and we can kind of start to make sense of this. So let's start with adding what are called parameters and we'll just do adding parameters here. So let's make a function and this function is called add 100 like this. 
Okay, and then the parameter I'm going to actually add inside instead of giving empty parentheses, I'm going to add in something called num. It's just going to be for number. And then we're going to go ahead and use our colon, hit enter, do a tab. And then what I want to do is I want to print number plus 100. So what am I doing here? I'm taking a number and I'm adding 100 to it. So my function of adding 100 makes logical sense. OK, so what's going to happen then if I say add 100 and then I specify a number in the parameter? Well, I'm going to say, what if I want to add 100 to 100? Well, then I should, in theory, print out 200, right? And there you go we have successfully printed out 200. So we can build upon this even more. So what if we want to use multiple parameters? OK, let's say we want to let's do multiple parameters. And we want to define an add function. We're just going to make an add. Even though it's built into Python, we're going to make our own. So we're just going to say add x and y. So now we have two parameters here. Okay, we're going to add our colon, make sure we indent, and then we're just going to say print x plus y. Now, if we go in and we add 7 and 7, we should get 14. And there's 14. So hopefully this is starting to make sense. All we're doing is building these mini programs, and we can have no parameters, as we saw up here. We can have single parameters or multiple parameters, depending on what we need. So let's go ahead and build a couple more out just to make sense of it. So what if we wanted to define multiply? And we'll just say x, y again. What do you think that's going to look like? Well, instead of saying print, what if we say return? I'm going to throw something new at you. I'm going to say return x and y. OK, now what happens if I call multiply and I say 7, 7 again? What happens here? Let's go ahead and save it. Well, nothing happened. We're not printing out to the screen. All we're doing is returning. So when I'm pulling this multiply in, it's returning a certain number. So I'm calling it here, and it's saying, hey, 7 times 7, that's 49. But I have no idea what you want me to do with it. Now, I could say print multiply here, and then we can see what happens. And now you see it's 49. So the return feature just allows us to return the number that is back to us, right? We don't have to always print it out if we don't want to. We can store it for later. So that's what we can do here. So we don't always have to print it. We can we can return the number and then call it later. So that's one way of looking at it. Let's do one more. How about we define square root? And we only take one number here. So how would we do the square root of something? Well, let's go ahead and just print out x. And then we're going to do by 0.5. Remember the exponent with two multiplications here. And then we're doing the square root. So we're going to take 0.5 instead of squared, which would be 2, right? So we're taking the square root, do 0.5. And let's take uh, an easy one. Let's return the square root of 64. So let's say square root of 64 and see what happens. And it returns 8 for us. Now we can make that integer if we want to and go from there. But that's just a, a nice base example. So lastly, I mentioned that we can make a function for a new line because we've been sitting in here and we've been just typing print and I am slow at it. I have to sit here and think about it and then I find the, the correct letters and this is how you print new line. OK, I'm not the best at it. But what if instead we just did something like define 
new line. And then we just put this here. So then we can just call a new line from here on out. We could say a new line. And then when this prints, it'll print out a new line. And while it's the same kind of length ish of this, we don't have to type in these special characters, look for them. We could even shorten this to like NL, something like NL, and then make it really simple. And then we save time. And this is where these programs come in and they save time. So good example of a use of a function. So I'm going to save this if you want to use this for moving forward and, and going on in the next videos. Absolutely welcome to. So if you're following along, go ahead and just leave your text editor open and I will catch you over in the next video as we start to talk about Boolean expressions.